Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be going over the full process of creating a new Unity ECS project. So I'm going to be going over how to actually create the new project, how to import all the correct packages, uh, make sure you have the correct performance settings set up in the Unity editor, and then I'm going to be going over a little bit of script organization and then showing you how to create data components and system scripts. Now I wanted to make this video because Unity ECS has gone through several changes since some of my earlier ECS videos and the way that things are done are a little bit different. Um, and I have kind of made some recommended settings changes and showed you how to kind of optimize things across different videos on my channel. Um, but I just wanted to make this one full concise video here just to show you how it's all done. Now I'm gonna be using version 0.17 of the Unity Entities packages as well as Unity version 2020.2.2. Um, so depending on when you're watching this video, things maybe are a little bit different, but I think this is going to be a general idea, at least for kind of the beginning half of 2021, to show you how to set up a new Unity ECS project. Again, Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system are still in the kind of experimental preview phases right now, um, so it is kind of subject to change, so just keep that in mind as you are developing. Anyways, before we get into the video, I'd just like to say if you did find today's video helpful, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system. Of course, if you do have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comments section below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and create our new Unity ECS project. So as you can see here, I have a Unity Hub open here, and we're just gonna go ahead and create a new project here. I'm gonna use uh, Unity version 2020.2.2. So for the Unity Entities 0.17 preview packages, the minimum required editor version is Unity 2020.1.2. So as long as you're using something newer than that, you should be good to go. And then when the new project dialog box pops up, just go ahead and give it a new project name. For project name, I usually do, you know, kind of the name of the project, which in this case is Awesome ECS. And then I do a dash project. So the dash project is kind of the root directory for the Unity project. Um, now for the location, you'll see that I have this saved under Unity projects slash Awesome ECS. Now that is different than the awesome ECS dash project here. This is basically just so I can kind of have like an extra folder layer in case I do need to, um, you know, put anything inside of this awesome ECS project. And so for templates, you can just leave this on a 3D template here. Um, if you do want to use HDRP or URP, feel free to use those templates as well. Um, but we'll just go ahead and create a basic 3D project here. So now that we have our project open in the Unity editor here, the first thing that we're going to need to do is import all the dots packages. So of course, just go up to Window and Package Manager, and you'll see the Package Manager open here. Now, there's actually no way as of right now that we can actually locate the dots packages because they're kind of experimental packages, so Unity kind of hides them away. So basically, the only way to get them is if we just go to the plus, and then we do an add package from git URL. Now the way you're gonna get basically all the packages you need is by adding the hybrid renderer package because the hybrid renderer package um, requires the Unity Entities package and then so it's gonna automatically add in the Unity Entities package and the Unity Entities package requires a bunch of other packages so those will all automatically be imported. So anyways, to add the hybrid renderer, we'll just type in com.unity.rendering dot hybrid and if we just did an add right now it's going to add the most recent version but if we want we can actually specify a version that we want to use so right now this is actually the latest version the uh, 0.11 previews 42 but for now we'll just take that out and we'll just add the latest package and then you'll see it says please wait installing a git package and this will take a little bit of time you'll see that it's just kind of loading right now um, eventually we will get a little progress bar and you'll see that it is now importing the packages here. All right, and once the progress bar has completed, then you'll see that we do now have the hybrid renderer here and we do have a check mark, meaning that it is successfully installed and up to date and all that. However, even though we can't see the other entities packages, they are in there, um, but we can confirm just by going to this gear icon and then we'll click the advanced project settings. You'll see that the project settings window opens here um, and then we're on the package manager tab. This is the location where if you wanted to enable preview packages to add them through the uh, package manager, you can do that here. Uh, but we don't need to check that because we've already imported them. Um, but if we do want to see the dependencies so we can see all the other packages, we'll just check mark the show dependencies. And then when we come back to the package manager. You see that now we now have a bunch of other preview packages. So you see that we do have the main entities package. We have burst. 
um, platforms, mathematics. These are all things that are related to the data oriented technology stack. Now, these are all the packages that we're gonna need to start developing with ECS. Um, however, there are a couple other optional ones that we can add depending on our project. So if you are using Live Link and you're doing some heavy kind of entity conversion workflow, uh, you may wanna add in the entity conversion preview window. You do that just by adding in the com.unity.dots.editor. I know the whole Live Link and entity conversion is a really big topic and I think I'm gonna do a dedicated video on that later. Um, but again, that is an optional package if you do want to add it to your project. Also, depending on the platform that you're developing to, there are some additional platform tools that you can import into your project. By default, Unity includes the just kind of generic platforms package, which does allow you to uh, make basic desktop builds of your game. However, you can add specific ones if you are making builds for, you know, Android, iOS, WebGL, and so on. And so you can just add those using the com.unity.platforms.platform name. But don't worry about that too much right now. Creating builds for your game um, is another topic that I do want to do a full dedicated video on because there are a lot of things that we can really go into depth on in that. So anyways, we're done with the package manager, so we can just close out of that. The next thing that we're going to do is enable our fast enter play mode settings. Um, so just go up to edit and project settings, and then we're going to go over to the editor tab. Now there are a bunch of options here, and we'll just scroll down to the bottom, and then we're going to want to check mark the box for enter play mode options, and then we're just going to leave the reload domain and reload scene boxes unchecked. And this is going to allow us, so when we're actually testing our game within the Unity editor, it's going to severely cut down the time that it takes to actually enter play mode. Um, I know before I had this setting unchecked, it was taking me like 10 seconds to enter play mode. And then after I check marked this box, it was like a fraction of a second to enter play mode. And there are some downsides, especially if you are using static fields, um, which is something that you shouldn't necessarily be doing in an ECS project. But I will leave some links to some uh, kind of more in-depth and detailed documentation from Unity about the limitations of the uh, fast enter play mode settings. All right, so as far as folder organization goes, I like to basically keep all my scripts under uh, kind of a generic scripts folder. However, especially with ECS, we're gonna end up with a bunch of scripts, so it really makes sense to kind of break things up a little bit further than that. So for smaller projects, I'm usually gonna break things up kind of like this. Basically, I'll have a data components folder. Also under the data components folder, I do have another folder for tags because a lot of times I'll just kind of have these empty data components called tags. And so it's good to just kind of throw these all in the tags folder. A helpers folder just kind of for these like um, extra helper scripts that aren't necessarily tied into the gameplay, um, but maybe you can, you know, drop tools and other things, um, extension methods and things like that in there. I'll have a folder dedicated for mono behaviors because, you know, still in ECS, we do need to add in some mono behaviors to our game to kind of implement some workarounds because not everything is fully featured yet in Unity ECS, unfortunately. And then finally, I'll have a folder for systems. So that's kind of what I'll do for smaller projects. Maybe if I'm just kind of like prototyping something out, this is gonna be the easiest way to kind of have some level of organization now, if I'm doing a bigger project, I'm going to structure things a little bit differently. Um, you know, still kind of have like some helpers, tool, tools, and UI folders. Um, but for everything related to the gameplay, I'm going to keep that within its own separate gameplay folder. And then here you can see that I kind of break things out. Um, more by things that they're related to rather than the type of script that it is. So you see that I have kind of a battle systems folder. The core would be kind of related to the core mechanics and rules of the game. Um, then of course like enemies and players. So, so with this kind of organization, this would be better for um, kind of a bigger project where maybe within these folders, we do have uh, multiple types of scripts. So we'll have components, systems, mono behaviors, um, just kind of all existing in each of these folders. So we're not really breaking it up by the type of script that it is. Um, rather, we're breaking it up by what it kind of relates to. So anyways, let's actually jump into one of these folders and we'll go ahead and create a new C Sharp script here. And we could just call this player data. So that's kind of how I name data components is I'll do um, kind of the thing that the data component is gonna be associated with it and then the word data after that. So when we open up our script in the editor of choice, um, of course, just go ahead and clear out everything here for the start and update functions. And then we can clear out the using statements. The one library that we will need a reference to, um, we'll just do a using unity.entities. And then instead of being a class, this is going to be a struct. 
And instead of inheriting from mono behavior, it's going to inherit from I component data. So this is a basic data component right now. If I was gonna be making, um, again, what I called a tag, this is what a tag would look like. It's just an empty data component. But if we do wanna put in a public int for some type of hit points or something like that, we can put that in there like that. And so that is just a basic data component. Now, if we wanna create a system, again, we'll just go ahead and create a, a new system here we'll just call this the uh, player system again with systems i like to use the uh, word system at the end of the file and class name so again we can kind of clear out the start and update functions and we'll be uh, once again using unity.entities instead of inheriting from mono behavior we're going to be uh, inheriting from system base and you'll see that we do have um, kind of this red underline here that's basically because we're not implementing the on update function. And so in most editors, you know, you can kind of do some sort of like alt enter shortcut to do uh, implement missing members. And you'll see that it'll go ahead and implement the protected override on update function. And so we can clear this out. And then in here, this is where we would do something um, maybe like our entities dot for each. And then we can go ahead and put in all the logic for our system in here. So again, feel free to go check out some of the other videos on my channel where I show you actually kind of more in depth about how to implement these data components and systems. If there are anything that you do want to uh, kind of learn more about, about setting up some of these basic entities, components, and systems, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. But other than that, that's basically how we set up um, kind of a, a generic ECS project. So we're ready to um, start taking advantage of all the massive performance benefits of Unity's entity component system. So I really do hope that you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots of more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.